I want to thank you all for coming out to the beach. You know, it's been a, you know, a challenging day. Uh, we had a lot to do at the expo. We got out here. We're paid a visit by Santa Monica Building and Safety. Uh, we've decided to uh, dine al fresco. It's a beautiful evening. And we're outside at the beach near the finish line of this year's race. Um, before we get started tonight, I just want to acknowledge a few people here. We have, um, from American Honda Motor Company, our fine sponsors with whom this event would not be possible. They're here in the front. Please give them a round of applause. Um, also, I'd just like to acknowledge, are there any legacy runners in the audience here tonight? Any legacy runners? Yes. I see some, that about to run his 25th straight Los Angeles Marathon. That's impressive. Give that man a round of applause. Okay, so we're going to get started now. I'm going to turn, we're going to start with um, the foremost broadcaster in the sport of track and field and running. That's Tony Revis, who's here. He's broadcast this event for many years. Please welcome Tony Revis. Foremost broadcaster in running, world's loudest whisperer. Well, hi. You know, uh, that young man is one of 233 legacy runners. And just to give you an idea, I think Boston has like 30 people have done the last 25. New York, even fewer than that. It's just an extraordinary number, more than any other major marathon in the world. The uh, Honda Los Angeles Marathon, brought to you by, presented by K-Swiss, does the best job of taking care of its legacy runners, and I hope that you all start your legacy out there tomorrow. How many people are actually running the race? My God. And we're having Rubio's for dinner, right? That'll be interesting. <laughs> Food, of course, is a cultural thing. I'll tell you right now, you cannot get a Kenyan to look at a lobster. They will not eat lobsters. Uh, you go to the Seoul Marathon, and they say, have you tried that dachshund? But here we're trying Rubio, so it uh, this could it could be good fuel. Now, for those of you who have realized that the the old course was not very pretty and not very fast, this course is both gorgeous and a potential burner. I've spent the last couple of days with the the professional runners, and they all say we have the top three men from last year coming back. Wesley Career from Kenya, who won the race last year in an event record 208.24, says he thinks all things right, this could be a 206-207 course, which could be very fast. Uh, now, if any of you guys know we have a, the gender challenge in place for tomorrow, where the men chase the women, kind of like what life's about. We used to do it for love, and now we're doing it for money. Uh, but it's a 18 minute and 47 second differential that the women have a head start at. Now that works out to 43 seconds per mile, 26 and a half seconds per kilometer for those of you who think in those terms. But that means that the men run 210, the women have to go just under 229. But it's a hundred thousand dollar bonus that's in place for that. So fortunately, the women all root for the women and the men all root for the men, and we'll see how things turn out. But also, another thing that's the first time this year at uh, Los Angeles, it's a sold-out field, 25,000 strong. <laughs> Last year, there were 17,000-plus. I mean, it's a 40% increase this year over last year. And you know that's got to do something with this magnificent course from uh, the stadium to the sea. My wife grew up in Los Angeles, and she was saying how this was always her long run through West Hollywood, they used to go down Wilshire because they love to work those hills, but now it's on Santa Monica, which does not have as many hills, and then down San Vicente. If you guys have not experienced uh, that street, that is the mecca for running in Los Angeles. Coming down San Vicente, those four miles to come to Ocean here to Santa Monica, you're going to go home and tell your friends, anyone who runs, this is the place to be. And you're going to be lucky that you're only one of 25,000 this year because if they want to, I mean, you got to realize they got 40,000 in New York. they got 40,000 in Chicago. There's no reason on earth that this place couldn't, if the roads will ha handle it, the world will find out that this is what Los Angeles should be known for, for marathon running, and watch out once word gets out that they're running on this beautiful, beautiful course. So we wish you guys all the best in the world. 
We want to recognize a couple of uh, running luminaries who are in the audience. Uh, Bart Yasso from Runner's World Magazine. Where's, where's Bart? Bart Mann. Dean Carnassus right next to him. Uh, you know, the Ultraman. And it would be interesting, would it not, which one of these guys has actually run more miles? I'm not sure. Bart's maybe been at it longer than Dean, but Dean is catching up very quickly. If I'm not mistaken, Dean rode. Down, this is it. Only Dean Carnassus could be a wimp by riding uh, on, a, on a sort of a cycling. It's not a cycle, it's like an elliptical cross trainer, but on a. Anyway, he wasn't on foot, but it's 500 miles he rode to get here. Normally he would run to get here and then do the race, but he's saving himself for the race tomorrow. But anyway, so those are some of the folks we've got here. But I want to turn it back over to Peter. Are you coming back up? Or, or us, they're making a, the difference, and we will get on with the program. But uh, we wish you guys all the best of luck. Now, tomorrow, for those who are not running, KTLA is broadcasting the race live at uh, 7 a.m. It's also being simulcast on Universal Sports on their TV and universalsports.com, and KTLA Radio as well. And what? KLAC Radio, rather. That's 570, I believe, on the AM dial. So anyway, there's coverage all over the place, and it's going to be plenty to talk about, and hopefully uh, we'll have some of you guys featured as well. Best of luck. Gim Hell. See you here at the finish. Thank you, Tony. Um, thank you very much. I want to turn it over now to my esteemed colleague, uh, friend, and partner here running the marathon, Russ Piller. Thank you, Peter. Good evening, everybody, and, and welcome to probably the loveliest stage we could have set for you this evening. We're so happy that you're here, and we're so glad to be able to welcome you to such a beautiful venue. It's been a long time coming, so give yourselves a hand. We're glad that you're here today and taking your challenge tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, you know, when I... Uh, when my friends heard that I'd taken a job as president of the Los Angeles Marathon, many of them who knew me well just assumed I had finally found something where I could wear shorts to the office 365 days a year. And indeed, I had not had time to go home, coach, I apologize, and clean up before this evening's festivities. But those of you, and, and many of you in the audience whom I've come to know over the last year and a half, uh, really understand that what connected me to the Los Angeles Marathon is the same thing that has brought you here this evening. It's the same thing we have in common with the 6,000 volunteers who are going to be on the side of the road tomorrow to help make sure your experience is as great as it can be. It's the same thing we have with the million people we're expecting along the side of the road to watch the event. It's the same thing that connects us with the nearly 100,000 people who came through two days of expo at Dodger Stadium around the Los Angeles Marathon. And that's what my colleagues and I call the transformative power of sport. And everyone here understands the transformative power of sport, but perhaps no two people that I know understand that better than Frank McCourt and Coach Pete Carroll. So Frank, I'd want to acknowledge you here today and offer you the chance to greet the audience if you'd like to do that. Thanks Russ. I'll just take a moment because I know you're all here to listen to Coach and uh, first of all, I want to say hello and um, thank you to our friends at Honda and at K-Swiss. It's a pleasure doing business with you all. And to all you runners out there, um, I, I really am in awe of, uh, of what, you're, what you do and what you're about to do. Um, I wish you all your, your personal best tomorrow and um, enjoy the new, the new race course. I think it's uh, gonna be fabulous and um, talk it up. And as Russ said, this is a way to bring uh, this whole part of the, the country together, that bring this region together in a, uh, in a way that's rarely done. So I wish you the best. Um, Enjoy the day, and uh, it's, it's a pleasure talking to you tonight, and I, I really do hope you all have a great, great time tomorrow. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. you know, about a year and a half ago, when uh, Frank McCord and I started talking about the Los Angeles Marathon, he exhorted me and my colleagues to do something extraordinary 
Yeah, I've had the good fortune over my career to work for some unusual men, but none who have been able to bring out the best in so many people around them as Frank McCourt has. And tomorrow's event is the culmination of his vision to help us, as he just mentioned, create something of which all Los Angelinos can be proud. Something that pulls us together. There are so precious few opportunities we have to come together and celebrate that Frank wanted us to create something that did. So uh, when we closed on the acquisition, the first thing Peter Abraham and I did was spend months at Frank's insistence crafting a mission statement for the Los Angeles Marathon. And my first reaction when Frank called me and said, you know, you guys need a mission statement was, yeah, it's a 26.2 mile foot race. The mission is get your shoes on, get out and move and finish up, right? But uh, all kidding aside, Frank really pushed and pushed and you don't have to spend a lot of time around Frank McCourt to know that he doesn't ever have to say the same thing twice to mean it. And so Peter and I in particular spent months on what uh, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes called the simplicity on the far side of complexity. And we came up with a mission statement that is the mission statement of the Los Angeles Marathon. Simply put, we inspire athletes and connect communities. And we hope that the course that you experience tomorrow really helps you, inspires you, and connects you to a greater sense of what's important in life and what's important in our community in Los Angeles. And interestingly enough, one of the most lovely people I've ever had the privilege to meet and probably the single person who embodies the inspiration of athletes and the connection of communities more than anyone else is Coach Pete Carroll. Now, about a year and a half ago, we started talking with Coach about getting involved in the Los Angeles Marathon because although I did not go to SC, it is clear that the teachings that he does at SC and has done at so many other places he has taught at before coming to SC are deeply rooted in the notion of inspiring athletes and connecting communities. It would have been enough for Pete Carroll to be an outstanding college football coach, but not for Pete Carroll, which is why there are organizations like Win Forever and A Better LA that exist today. And I encourage all of you before you leave today to visit the red tent out in front of the food tent and learn more in detail about what Pete is doing in our community and his continued commitment to our community in spite of the fact that we have lost him to a few hundred miles north, a few thousand miles north of here. But Pete's become the coach of coaches for the Los Angeles Marathon. He spent countless hours with our trainers helping bring out the best in them so they could bring out the best in you. It reminds me of a favorite quote I have from Henry Adams, the great 17th century educator. Henry Adams once said, a teacher affects eternity because he never knows where his influence stops. And when I look at the thousands of student athletes that Pete Carroll has had a chance to touch over the course of his career, and by extension, the thousands, tens of thousands, and hundreds of thousands of people for whom the concept of always compete and win forever is a central tenet of their very being, as it is for me, my wife Carrie, and our two young boys, I'm just in awe. So without any further ado, it is my privilege and pleasure to introduce to you tonight's featured speaker, Coach Pete Carroll. Thank you so much. We're glad to have you here. Thank you. Wow! That's a nice introduction, Russ. I appreciate that. First off, I got to tell you that I am so pumped up to be here. God, I'm fired up to be around you guys today. This event that uh, we caught hold of a month or over, I guess, over a year ago now, um, was set in motion by Frank McCourt. Hired Peter Abraham and, and Russ Piller here to, to get this thing cranked up. And they had an idea of doing something very, very unique. And as they talked about it, and, and uh, with my colleague Yogi Roth here, who's been so connected to the whole event, they talked to us about doing something really special, something that's kind of, you know, that maybe LA can't even uh, anticipate uh, handling. 
And as they talked, they, we just started to come together. Because with our thought uh, and as a philosophy of win forever, one of the guidelines of our whole thinking is you want to do things better than it's ever been done before in everything you're doing. And this is exactly what they have done. In two years' time, Frank took over a year, uh, two years ago. They, they got things rolling, got underway. And then one year after that, they've got a crowd that they're turning away thousands of runners that want to be part of this, this marvelous event. 25,000 people are running, and there's probably another five or eight or 10,000 that would have gotten involved if they could have. They've already got it going better than it's ever been done before. So to be a part of this kind of an effort, knowing that it does so much to connect with the community, as well as challenge all of you runners that are going to be part of it, it's, I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm pumped up about it. So with that, I'm going to talk to the runners. And I know there's others that are connected to the runners, and some of you have run before, and all of you have competed at one time or another. But to me, this is the night before the big game. This is the night before the big race, the marathon, and man, am I happy to be here and fired up to talk to you tonight. You know, I don't know if you know this, but if you've thought of it this way, but you are up at runners against one of the great challengers uh, of all time. You're, you're going head to head with your, maybe your all time greatest opponent, one that knows you so well, one that knows everything there is to know about you, and that one that can make or break you. One that has trash talked to you probably more than you would love, like to admit. Knows what's going to happen tomorrow, maybe. Is going to be right there in your mug the whole race. Is you. You're up against you tomorrow. You're up against that voice in the back of your head that's been talking to you all those times you've been competing. All those hundreds of hours that you've been running. Those hundreds of, of hours and road work that you've been putting forth to get yourself ready for this. And it keeps talking at you. Oh, you know, you ain't got it today. You know, oh, you better you might take it in. Uh, that's far enough. Let's go back. Let's turn now. <laughs> it's you. We need to deal with you before we're done here tonight so we can get you right. It's a... Uh, it's a marvelous challenge that you've undertaken. Somewhere along the way, every one of the runners said, in a moment, I'm going to run the LA Marathon. And then everything kicked into gear. And you started preparing. Once you made that thought, that commitment to yourself known, now you're in. And you know what it's taken to get here. You know how hard you've worked, how many mornings you had to get up to that alarm, maybe for a lot of you when it's dark, before you go to work, you tie on those shoes and here you go, you get out on the road and start hitting it, or you're doing it late at night after you get back from work and you're finding a way to get yourself in that mindset that it takes to get yourself ready. I mean, this is months and months and months of preparation for most of you. I'm, I'm so thrilled to be around that kind of commitment. I'm so proud to be around the guys and the men and women that are doing that, not just for the first timers, but for those that have come back time and time again and continue to do this and meet this challenge. God, I just love being with you tonight. And it ain't going to be easy. Now, the vision that they, they, they hoped from the stadium to the ocean was going to be kind of kind of classy and got something about it that's going to draw you, but when you're running those miles and you can't see the ocean, <laughs> whoo, it's a long way getting here. But it's here. <laughs> it's waiting for you. That big splash, when you, if you do it right, if you're going to do it right, you got to get in the water when you get here. <laughs> but don't go in too deep because <laughs> you're just going to climb back up on that sand, and lay in that sand, and feel it. Exhausted. You, you spent it all. Absolutely satisfied. Wow, what a moment it is. It's extraordinary. I, I, I'm, so, I'm so proud to be part of you tonight. And I'm hoping that along the way, uh, that as you're running, uh, I want you to utilize this little voice that's in your head to help you, not to work against you tomorrow. It's going to be talking at you. You know, it's going to be talking about your feet. <laughs> talking about those thighs and the pounding in your knees and, and, and your lower back and all that. And then you're going to look alongside, you're going to see somebody that's hurting a little more than you. <laughs> <laughs> you're not running by yourself tomorrow. There's 25,000 people out there. You're running with a bunch of people that have been inspired to do what you're going to do. Feed off of them. Draw from their energy. Use their, their, their energy that they're bringing as well. And feed them, too, with your efforts. What a marvelous, marvelous event this is. I'm hoping that somewhere along there, you get that feeling. You know, that I'm starting to feel it now. I'm starting to feel okay. I, got, I, 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 can, I can sense I'm going to make this the way I, I've set out to do it. Because tomorrow, you know, 
you're going to be warriors. You know, a warrior doesn't know when he enters the battlefield whether he's going to make it or not. He doesn't know the results, just like you don't either. You don't know how fast you're going to run. You don't know what it's going to be like. You're just going to go for it, and you're going to have to wait and see. But the warrior isn't worried about that. He knows he's going to compete. He knows he's going to battle. He's stepping across that, that line to start the, uh, the race, to enter the arena, to enter the battlefield, just like you are. It's no different. Not knowing what's happening, not knowing what's going what, what's to come your way. But he does it because he's a warrior, and that's all he knows. In, in the commitment that you've made, in the effort to do this, you have also joined that rank. You're, you're a warrior in this thing tomorrow. That, that's why I'm so fired up to be part of you and to be around you. Now, the reason that's important to, to acknowledge is because you need to take that with you as you run. You need to be proud of yourself. You've already won because you've gone through the time with the commitment and you've met the, the challenges of the process of getting here so that when you do cross that line and you kick this thing into high gear, you've already won. Now you celebrate the day. You celebrate all of that time with running this race tomorrow and see how far you go and how fast you run. I think it's awesome. God, I'm so excited for you. And I, I'm so pumped up because every one of you have just made a, a lifetime's moment for yourself. You're going to remember this the rest of your life. And even the time building up that was so memorable will always be capsulized by, by this, this day. So here's, here's what's, what I want to make sure you do. I want you to feel the, the, the good feelings about what you've put forth to get here. And, and stay with that as you run. And use that as, you, as you, you feel yourself going through the challenges. And when you get to the hill over there by the, by the university and you feel yourself working it. I want you to feel the, the good stuff that's made you uh, get to this point. And let it fill you up and feel it and, and keep feeling it until you get down. We're starting to go downhill and still you start to smell the salt water and you, and you can feel it. The ocean's right there. Marvelous, marvelous feeling of accomplishment. You're all going get, to get the chance to do that. No matter what it takes, get to this freaking ocean. <laughs> you got to get there. You know what I'm talking about? You've got to get here. I don't care how long it takes or who's got to pull you along or whatever it is. You've got to get here because you've earned it and you deserve it. And you're all worthy of that. You know, a few years ago, I'll tell you one little story. Night before a game, we were playing in Jacksonville. I was at New England at the time. And the night before the game, like tonight, is always a big deal to me. I mean, it's, it's, it's a big deal because it's the culmination of all the preparation that goes in to get to the big event that you've been just pointing towards. And, and I want to make sure that our minds are right as we enter the, the, the arena and the event. I want to make sure everybody's together, we're just tight as can be, so that we can maximize and do everything we want to do with this moment. So here it was, it was a huge Friday, uh, Saturday night, for, uh, check that, a huge Saturday night, it was in the NFL then, I played on Sundays. Um, and I wanted to do something just right to kind of capture the, the feeling of the night. So I, as I got ready and got prepared to go into the, to the meeting, we get in those little closed rooms. You know, it's just the players and the coaches, and that's all it is. And it's kind of intense, and everybody's kind of ready to kind of get juiced up one more time. I thought about talking about peak experiences, peak moments. And, 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 I, and to do that, I wanted to ask the crowd, and I'm asking you right now, I want you to think of a time in your sporting life, most likely, it could have been otherwise. You may have been one of those great musicians or a great artist or, or a performer on the stage or whatever, when things went exactly right. When you felt that you're, you're, most, you're, you're most powerful and, and everything seemed to come together. And there was those, those, just those wonderful just instants that you can recall so clearly and so perfectly because it was just one of those times. I want you to think about that. I did that with the football team. And I happened to know that Lawyer Malloy, our strong safety, had thrown a perfect game when he was in high school in, in baseball as a pitcher. So I, I, I kind of found that out before I talked that night. So says, anybody may think it? been a pitcher in baseball and had thrown me you know, maybe a no hit or something. A lawyer couldn't wait to raise his hand and get up. I had him. <laughs> I said, well, tell us about it. What happened? What did it feel like? And he went on to talk about how, how, how everything seemed in slow motion, how he seemed more powerful and stronger than he'd ever been before. He could put the ball wherever he wanted to. He totally commanded the whole uh, uh, seven innings that he had pitched and just knew what he was doing. And just it was a perfect uh, 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 game for him. 
And so I, I asked the other guys, you know, to think about those moments. It's just so that in our minds, we went back to that place where we've done something really unique and special. Because peak experiences, peak moments are about things coming together. It, it's that, that time when, when space and time and all that just slows down, isn't part of it, and your senses are so heightened, and you're so clearly focused in the event, you can't think, there's nothing else in your mind. You all have a chance to experience that. We all have a chance to be in those moments. We create those ourselves, and that doesn't come from outside of us. We create that by things coming together at exactly the right time. Maybe it's tomorrow for you guys. Maybe that moment is just waiting for you because we're the ones that control it and that we are the ones that have the power here. Can we bring it together? Can we be so immersed and so focused that we can do that? So I asked the team, I said, well, tomorrow in this game, it's going to, somebody's going to understand what I'm talking about. And when we come back on Monday and we have our meetings, I want to make sure that you know, we, we, we hold testimony to the moment and you tell us your story and let us know what it felt like to, to have one of those peak moments in this game against Jacksonville. Jacksonville had won 13 straight home games. We were fighting for a, in a playoff run at the end to win our division. It was a big game, big matchup. crowd was going crazy. We get to the stadium. Everything's going great, feeling good. The opening kickoff happens. The ball goes up. We go down. We're, cha we're covering the kickoff. And one of our rookies, Rookie uh, linebackers makes the most colossal hit you've ever seen. He hits the running back. The ball goes straight up about 15 yards in the air. Comes down a big heap of bodies. But guys fighting and scratching, getting the ball. We recover the fumble. Vernon Crawford comes running off the field. I'm in the zone. I'm in the zone. I'm in the zone. <laughs> I never would have thought Vernon would have been that guy. <laughs> we didn't even have to get back to Monday. He told it right on the sidelines just as it happened. You all have the power. You have the power to make this a great event tomorrow. It's going to be hard. Let's, let's, let's just admit that right now. It's going to be a challenge. But somewhere along there, you're going to feel it. You're going to get connected to the race. You're going to get connected to the run. You're going to get the sense for what you can do. You're all capable of making this. And when you get that feel that you can start to smell the air and, and, and you can start to feel that the ocean's right there, you've got to get home now. <laughs> you've got to get there. Thanks for letting me be part of it. I'm so proud to be connected to this thing. If you want to win forever, you always compete. Winning forever is about maximizing the potential of what you are and who you are. This is an exact perfect opportunity to do just that. You don't have to be like Rod running. You don't have to be like the great ones, that are the elite runners that are out there. You need to be the best you tomorrow. And that's going to happen. It's going to guaranteed to happen. I wish you the very best. Celebrate the moment. Celebrate the hard work. Celebrate with your fellow warriors down here as you're kind of flop, flop, you know, flopping around in the sand and in the water and have a great day for you. Thank you very much for letting me be part of this thing. See ya.